there. Welcome to Mama Fox Books Storytime Saturdays. I'm children's author Phoebe Fox and today I want to introduce you to Kathy McMahon. She's an author of chapter books and her series is called Mortimer and Me. So I'm going to ask her a few questions today and she's going to tell us a little bit about her newest book about Mortimer. So Kathy, tell us how you got into writing. Oh, wow. I was a elementary school teacher for 32 years. I did not actually start to write until I retired. But my final year of teaching, I was teaching sixth grade and we were working on um, their writing and illustrating their own stories. And so I thought if I'm going to teach them how to do that, I should probably have an example <laughs> myself. So this kind of goes into um, what we were gonna talk about a little later, which is how did um, I come up with the idea for Mortimer. I'd love to hear and, how you did. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Mortimer was a, a moose, is a moose, and it was actually based on uh, story time that my dad used to tell, you know, the same Aww. kind of, of thing that you're doing with your, with your audience here. And um, he used to tell me bedtime stories and he had a character named Mortimer. And I fell in love with that name. But his was a donkey, and I didn't oh. want to write about a donkey, so I decided, um, well, let's make it a moose. And so Mortimer and the Moose, um, I started writing that as a picture book when I was working with my sixth graders. Oh, and, it started um, that way. Started out that way. I have a music background, so I was um, thinking I could write picture books with an original song to go with it. Oh, and um, <laughs> so I started doing that with Mortimer. So Mortimer does have his own song. And, is this um, Mortimer right here? This is Mortimer. Oh, yeah, that's so cute. My books are for ages six through ten, and uh, for those kids that are just getting ready to get out of the picture books and write and and start reading their chapter books. And, and so that's how I got started writing. What's the first one? The first one is called Mortimer and Me, and that's what the whole series is called. It is about an eight-year-old boy named Jimmy who moves from uh, Arizona to Wisconsin. Oh. And he has trouble making friends at first. And uh, and he gets into trouble on the playground on first, his first day at his new school. Oh. And here comes this big old moose onto the playground. I mean, he's <laughs> there all the time and he just makes friends with Jimmy and so. Is that typical you know. for that area? It's It's, Typical to have moose in Wisconsin, but not necessarily on a school playground, gotcha. that's for sure. So they just become friends and uh, Jimmy eventually makes some some kid friends and, and uh, the whole series is about the, all of these kids and Mortimer going on these different adventures. Oh, so. so how many do you have now? Well, my newest book that just came out makes it the seventh. So there are seven books that's in the series. Mean. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about each one? Sure. The second book in the series is called The Bigfoot Mystery. In that one, this group of kids that Jimmy hangs around with, um, they form a scouting troop called the Trailblazers. And so the Trailblazers are made up of both boys and girls, and they are on a camping trip in the forest. And they discover these huge footprints and they don't know who or what made them. So they think maybe it might've been Bigfoot. And so they are on a quest to find out who made those footprints and whether or not it's really Bigfoot. So the next one in the series is called Moose for Hire. And in this one, um, Jimmy has a next door neighbor named Charlie and Charlie was um, Jimmy's grandpa's best friend growing up. So he's an elderly man. He and Charlie become, you know, good buddies. And so Charlie helps him build a treehouse in the backyard and when he's climbing down from the treehouse Charlie breaks his leg he falls and breaks his leg so Jimmy feels responsible for that and he wants to help him out with his medical bills and so he and Mortimer decide they need to get a summer job so who's gonna hire an eight-year-old boy in a job as an eight-year-old huh? <laughs> so they come up with all sorts of plans like uh, mowing lawns and um delivering groceries and dog walking. You can imagine what that would be like, a moose and a boy <laughs> walking all these dogs. So they finally come up with a plan on how they can um, earn some money and the trailblazers help out. But 
a catastrophic event happens and maybe they're not gonna be able to do that. So that's mm. kind of another mystery. But you know, as a teacher, I like to see a series kind of progresses the readers um, get better in their reading ability. So um, wonderful. So the fourth book is probably I, I say it's my favorite, but they're all really my favorite. But Loose in Space is about a science fair project gone bad. Basically, Jimmy and his science partner, Chelsea, want to enter the school science fair with an experiment that's never been done before. They have, There's a couple of um, kids in the group. They're not really bullies, but they're just kind of those kids that are always making fun of you kind of deal. Kevin and Bradley are the two of them. And they decide that, no, no, you're not gonna win this contest because we've always won with our volcano. And so oh. um, they do something to sabotage the project that Jimmy and, and Chelsea do, which ends up sending Mortimer up and down the streets of Peabody, Wisconsin in this handmade, hand-built rocket they call the Moose Rocket. And so all of the trailblazers have to jump on their bicycles and chase after the moose. And, he, en he ends up in the fountain in the fountain square at the bottom of the hill. So, so more humor. It's very it funny. Like yeah. Most of your books yeah. have a lot of humor in them. They do. They do. Because, I mean, kids like humor. I like humor. That's that's what I like to write is Definitely. just funny stories. And then we move on to I Have a Spooky Mystery. This is the House on Briarwood Lane. Um, there's this old abandoned mansion in the town. Nobody's lived in it for over five years and it has a old for sale sign on it that and all of a sudden Jimmy and, and Mortimer notice a light up in the attic. And they think they see a face in the window, hmm. but nobody ever sees anybody coming in or out of that house. So they, the town all thinks that it's haunted. So nobody goes near it. Well, it's Halloween time, so it takes place in the fall. And on Halloween night, Jimmy and Mortimer decide to go in the house and see if it's really haunted or not. Sounds pretty brave. And then the sixth book in the series is called The Moosicle. I used to teach music before I went into the regular classroom. And um, I used to write musicals to go with the curriculum. So when I was teaching fourth grade, we were learning about um, Arizona history. And so I wrote a musical about Arizona. So this is kind of based on that, but of course it takes place in Wisconsin. So, mm. so the kids in the book are writing an original musical about Wisconsin. And oh. so they're help, getting help from their music teacher and they decide to put it on for the whole town. And in the process, they learn a little bit about the legislative process, like how a bill becomes a law. And um, they decide they want to try to change the state animal of Wisconsin from badger to moose, <laughs> of course. It's a, um, a very educational book as far as just learning about some of the, the things that you learn in social studies in mm -hmm. school. But um, it's also really fun with the musical that they put on. And of course, Mortimer has to be a part of that. And I don't know if you've ever seen a moose sing and dance, but um, Mortimer I'd tells like to, to do that. Yeah, <laughs> Just picturing that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So this is my newest book. It's called Undercover Moose. It's another mystery. And uh, it is based on the founder of Peabody, Wisconsin, which is the city where um, Jimmy and Mortimer live. And uh, they're having a big centennial celebration. It's the 100th year anniversary of Peabody. And so the, the town has planned this big celebration um, in the park where the statue is. And um, they're going to have all sorts of carnival games and fun stuff like that. And uh, they're also going to open the time capsule that's been buried underneath the statue that was put in there a hundred years before. So the problem is that nobody knows anything about Archibald Peabody, who is supposedly the founder of Peabody. And so um, Jimmy's teacher, his fourth grade teacher, gives the class an assignment to go and find out what they can about Archibald Peabody. And in the process, 
they uncover this real estate agent guy that comes to town and he starts asking all these questions about Archibald Peabody and they find out that he has plans to build a gated community, a bunch of fancy houses in the forest where Mortimer lives. And so they're like, no, you can't tear down Mortimer's habitat. <clears throat> so they go on this quest to not only find out more about Archibald Peabody, but also find out how they can stop this real estate agent from um, tearing down the forest where Mortimer lives. So they do all sorts of stuff and um, it uncovers a whole new mystery that nobody knew anything about, um, which involves a train robbery and some missing gold and, um, and this man that's trying to find it. So I want to read you a little excerpt from Undercover Moose. This is actually after they discover the scheme by this real estate agent and they are trying to go to the mayor and see what they can do as far as stopping him. When we burst into the mayor's office, the secretary jerks her head up, eyes wide. May I help you? We'd left my house in such a hurry, I hadn't even thought about what I would say when we got here. We, we, we need to see the mayor. My heart pounds as I try to catch my breath. The secretary studies her desk calendar. Do you have an appointment? My shoulders slump. No. I guess I thought since the mayor was so impressed by the performance of our original musical last month, we wouldn't need an appointment. Secretary's mouth smiles, but her eyes remain cold. I'm sorry, you can't see the mayor without an appointment. But ma'am, pleads Chelsea, this is a matter of life and death. The secretary stands up from her desk and puts her hands on her hips. Whose life? Without missing a beat, we say together, Mortimer's. The door opens and Mayor Albright sticks her head out, a stern look on her face. What's all the commotion here? I'm on the phone with the governor. Her face softens when she recognizes us. Look who's here, my miniature politicians. What can I do for you? Somebody wants to tear down the forest. Mortimer's home is there. What's a gated community anyway? We all start jabbering at once until Mayor Albright holds up her hands. One at a time. Jimmy, you explain. I take a deep breath and tell her about the out-of-town guy we overheard at the Historical Society and how he wants to build a housing development in the part of the forest where Mortimer lives. Mayor, you can't be serious about letting a stranger destroy Mortimer's habitat. I fold my arms across my chest. Justin joins in. Not to mention the other animals in the forest. It's not right. The mayor tucks a strand of hair behind her ear. Hmm, you may have a point. This development will bring a lot of jobs to the town, as well as some much needed housing. But we certainly don't want to disrupt nature. Let me bring it up at the next town council meeting. Now, I must get back to my phone call. She turns and heads back to her inner office. Say hi to the governor for us, Terrence shouts. We gape at him. What? He holds up his hands. I'm sure he remembers us. A secretary ushers us out of the office. We leave the building and meet up with Mortimer at the statue of Archibald Peabody. What does all that mean? Brian asks. Did she just blow us off or what? Kevin snorts. Once again, nobody cares what kids think. I thought maybe they had changed their minds after our petition drive, says Brittany. 1,000 people signed our petition to change the state animal. Allison claps her hands, and several hundred registered to vote. We can make a difference. Maybe we should organize a protest, Chelsea passes, paces back and forth. We can make signs and picket the construction line and, and chain ourselves to the bulldozers. Bradley's face turns crimson with all the excitement. Hey, I read about it in a book about a group of kids who tried to save some little owls. As voices rise with more suggestions, a loud clank stops all the commotion. We look over to see Mortimer standing next to the statue, a large brick at his feet. I rush over to him. Mortimer, what did you do? I gaze down at the bottom of the brick foundation under the statue. A rectangular hole gapes open. I crouch down to replace the brick before anyone notices. 
I jiggle it back and forth to ease it back in place, but something blocks it from going back in. I grab the mini flashlight I keep in my pocket and turn it on. I peer inside. Something's in there. I reach in to grab whatever it is. Amelia squeals, be careful. And I wanna show you the picture of Mortimer and the brick that fell out of the bottom of the statue. So there are illustrations in my books. So they're all black and white, but they're really, really cool illustrations. My hand wraps around something that feels like a jar. I slowly pull it out as everyone moves closer. I try to turn the metal lid, but it won't budge. Here, let me try. Kevin takes the jar and grunts as he attempts to open it. Others take a turn, but no luck. I've got an idea. I grab the jar and try to pry it open using Mortimer's antlers. When that doesn't work either, Mortimer leans over and slurps his tongue all over the lid. Ew, gross. I use the bottom of my t-shirt to wipe the slobber off. I feel the lid start to move, so I stick the jar in Mortimer's antlers again and use them like a can opener. Gradually, the lid twists off. What's in it? Matilda whispers. I slide out a piece of paper, and when I unfold it, a smaller piece of paper wrapped around something heavy drops out. I open that up to reveal an old key. That looks like the key to the Briarwood house, Kevin comments. The one I found in my dad's desk when we thought the house was haunted. Amelia takes a closer look. It's old, like our key, but with a different pattern on it. What does the note say? I read the note to myself. It doesn't make any sense. I unfold the bigger sheet of paper and hold it up for display. That looks like a map, says Grayson, but where does it lead? And what does the key open? Terence holds it up to get a closer look. A map, a key, and a note to decipher. Matilda rubs her hands together. It looks like we have another mystery to solve, my fellow trailblazers. Kathy, thank you so much for reading that. I can't wait to see how it ends. <laughs> Do you think there are more Mortimer books coming? Um, my illustrator, Tom Tate, and I have talked about this, and um, I think we're ready to bring the series to an end. There'll be one more book, but what's going to happen is um, when Jimmy moves on to fifth grade, he has a younger sister named Lily. And so we've decided that maybe we'll start another series that features Lily as a third grader. Oh, so we'll have a girl character then, and she'll have a whole set of different kinds of adventures that they go on with a whole different group of kids. So I think we're going to try that. That is so exciting. So, yeah. Is, so when the so eighth cool. one comes out, when the final book in the Mortimer Me series comes out, I will include maybe the first chapter of the Mortimer and Lily series that will come oh, after fun. that. Oh, fun. So, a little preview. So, yeah. So that's in the making and probably won't be another year till that one comes out. But, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me well, today. thanks for having me. We hope that you'll subscribe to Mama Fox Books Storytime Saturdays and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.